<laughs> welcome true hope family online welcome true hope family in person um it's great to be together and it is good to sing praises to the lord this last song pour your spirit out said praise can break down prison walls and i thought we have experienced that here when we've chosen to praise god not just for the nice things not just for who he is but for the stuff we're dealing with we have watched yes. prison walls yes. come broken down so it's truth and it's good and so we are glad to be together so we are an interactive church somebody commented on that like sounds like people are talking to you. yes that is exactly who we are and we love that so if you're enjoying uh, uh, us online yes you will hear some things you might even hear a bark or two today it's all good <laughs> we are we are just kind of a chaotic wonderful group of Hallelujah. community family <laughs> real life happens real life happens <laughs> So let's start with prayer before we completely get sidetracked. <laughs> Lord Jesus, Father God, Holy Spirit, we praise you. We praise you. We praise you for who you are. We praise you for all the great things you've done for us. And we praise you for all the hard things we're going through. Because you are God. You are good. And even in the hardest stuff, you work for our good. Even if it doesn't feel good, God, help us to not be about feelings, but be about truth and be about you and help us to learn today what it is you have for us. Open our um, eyes so we can see, open our ears so we can hear and open our heart so we can, make, can receive from you the very thing you have for us today. Lord, we thank you in advance because we know that you are God who answers when we ask, who is with us, and who is for us. And we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, we're in parables still. What are some parables we've already visited? Anybody remember? The lost sheep. The lost sheep. Yes, yes, yes. That was last week, the lost sheep. <laughs> we... The unmerciful servant. Yes, sirree. It's, uh, you know, he had been forgiven 600,000 times. <laughs> no help. We had the rich fool who said, I'm going to build me some bigger bonds because God has been good to me. God says, you fool, today. <laughs> Your life is required of you. So, but rather to invest it in the pearl of great price and the treasure in the field to give it all for Jesus and the kingdom. And the good soils, right? Or not the good soils, that's coming in, in on the 20th. But the, the foundations, either build your house on sand or on the rock. So those are some of the things we've visited. And what's the point of the parable? It's really to find yourself in the story and then maybe do some evaluating like, huh, <laughs> what needs to change in me? Right? Sometimes in churches, we listen for the person next to us. So. <laughs> <laughs> so I would encourage us to listen to the person that's sitting right there. Okay? All right. Today, I tried not to have this one, but, you know, you can't argue with the Lord. Well, you can, but you don't lose, you don't win that battle. Um, is the parable of the lost son. And it's actually in the section of parables with the lost sheep. Still in Luke 15. And do we remember the context of the lost sheep? What was going on? Who was he talking to? Do we remember? He was talking to the Pharisees and the scribes. And who were listening in? Do you remember? The sinners and the tax collectors. And they were drawn. But what were the Pharisees doing? Yeah, and they were murmuring complaining going can you believe that guy he calls himself a rabbi and he's hanging out with the tax collectors and sinners you know if he was any kind of rabbi at all he'd know what kind of people those are and so that's that's when he said hmm let me tell you a story actually I have another story I have another story and today we're looking at the third story and that's the parable of the lost son now you have known those par that this parable what's the other name for this one prodigal son yeah tale of two brothers but it's a parable of the prodigal son now here it's a little bit of a trick question what does prodigal mean lost is a thought because that's how we use it even in the song we sing 
you know, prodigal come on home. We say it like prodigal actually means recklessly extravagant. <laughs> It's, it's recklessly extravagant. It's wasteful riches. Okay? Recklessly extravagant. So, here we are. Luke 15, 11 through 32. <laughs> Can we help you? <laughs> we have somebody playing with the slides. Okay, then he said, this is Jesus, a certain man had two sons. And the younger of them said to his father, Father, Give me the portion of goods that fall to me. Okay. So, um, fathers in those days could choose to divide up the inheritance and give it ahead of death, or most more common, at death. And so, but that's the choice of the father, right? So what's happening here in a story? Right off, it's like, it's causing a what? You know, for the listeners. Because what's happening? The younger is saying, I want my inheritance now. We're just going to pretend you're dead, right? That's a little rude, wouldn't you say? And he, d he says, Father, give me the portion of goods that falls to me, like it's it owed him. So the father, he divided to them his livelihood. Knowing full well that this kid had no practice as a wealthy younger son in managing his money. I'm sure he knew this wasn't going to go right. So not many days after, the younger son gathered all together, everything he had, journeyed to a far country, and there wasted his possessions on in uh, with prodigal living. So he's leaving home, and he's going to a far country. Now, why might he want to go to a far country? What's he doing? Separating. He doesn't want anybody to mind his business for him. He wants to do what he wants to do. It's like out of his father's reach, as far as possible, right? He no, I'm, do, I'm doing my own thing. I've got my money. I am the king of my own world. And really what, he, what the choices of this son is to run the show, to be his own God, to run his life. Now, I know in our group there's nobody who's ever done that before. <laughs> right? None of us. None of us have done that ever. <laughs> so, and he, and he wasted his possessions. He didn't invest. He had no sense of how this was in prodigal living, which is recklessly extravagant. He spent it on whatever he wanted. He probably had tenderloin steak. He had the best wines. He surrounded him with the women he wanted. He had all sorts of friends suddenly who also helped him spend the money. He might have bought a Ferrari, even a Lambo. I don't know. You know, but something extravagant he would have done. But, ah, uh, turning in story already, when he had spent all, oopsies, <laughs> you can spend it once, right? And then, but if you're not earning it, uh, at the same time, there's nothing left. There arose a severe famine in the land. So God didn't have much to do with how he spent his money, but God had something to do with what happened next, right? And he began to be in want. When people don't have everything they want, and they're actually suffering, it's all of a sudden like the cottons com come out of your ears, and you're able to actually hear. Have you noticed it? When you're in want, suddenly you fall to your knees, you cry out to the Father because you ain't got nothing left yourself. So this is the beginning, but he's not ready. He's not ready to go home. Then he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country. He's in a foreign country. Jewish boys aren't supposed to do that to begin with. And now he's hired by some one of those people. And he sent him into his fields to feed the swine. Do Jews eat pig, pig food? No, it's so, you know, they're not making bacon there. We'll have bacon later for lunch, but they won't have it, <laughs> not them. But, so I was trying to think of an equivalent because some of us may think those are cute. I wouldn't be one of them, but you know. Um, so we had a, do you know, anybody know what a sump pump is? You know what a sump pump with a grinder is? 
Yeah, okay. All right. So when you have a lower basement and uh, you have a bathroom there, the water and other goods need to be pumped up to where the where the septic where it goes to the septic. So if you don't have a grinder working, that means certain not liquid items have more trouble going through. You get you get my meaning. So when a sump pump breaks, there is a there's a pit basically the sump pump sits into. I can tell you it does not smell good. <laughs> it was very yucky and we had that happen this week we had our sump pump break and um, so we had to pour we had to, p had to call a person who was like oh I asked him who do you know anybody he goes I've done it before I'll just come over and he was there in like an hour and a half and he fixed it in three hours went to the store to get the sump pump and all that stuff so that was great but you know I feel terrible for this guy because that would be like we could have taken the the thing off but there was nobody in our house who was like me I want to take the <laughs> I'll hose that out and so imagine that job imagine the sewer job okay that's what he had and um, I, I'm and so he was hungry and he would have gladly have filled his stomach it says with the pods that the swine ate so it were carob pods that was normal food for uh, cattle and pigs and even poor people would eat it if there's nothing else but this is a wealthy boy right he is like this is not a new experience and maybe some of you have had that you you had a pretty good life and all of a sudden you find yourself maybe on the street and you were eating things you would never think you would do and here's a sentence and no one gave him anything no one gave him anything yeah exactly poor me <laughs> what are you doing <laughs> you're playing the violin for the boy <laughs> yeah no one gave him anything poor me but for him like he had spent all his money he had these friends has that ever happened to anybody you it's kind of going well for you and all of a sudden you have friends and you need help and oh, yeah. crickets crickets you know where are they all <laughs> so this is his experience but it goes on but when he came to himself he said like he he you know he hadn't come to himself when he hired himself out but eventually hunger hanging out with this lo these lovely animals eating pig food he finally went what am I doing what am I doing so when he came to himself he said how many of my father's hires hired servants have bread enough and to spare and I perish with hungry hunger what am I doing what's wrong with me he says I will arise and go to my father and I will say to him father I've sinned against heaven and before you and I'm no longer worthy to be called your son make me like one of your hired servants he's not blaming it's his country's fault it's my father's fault it's my older brother's fault it's it's my friend's fault what is he saying I have sinned against heaven and before you I mean he's he's rehearsing a speech but he gets it he's not blaming sometimes when we mess up it's someone else's fault right someone else caused me to do it I tripped up and it's someone else's fault and how many times in our community where we're dealing with recovery and 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 stuff like that how how easier is it to say well if so-and-so hadn't done so such and such I wouldn't have done this exactly right 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 sometimes parents get blamed it's your fault you made me mad and now I'm gonna use really let me help you <laughs> like I'm gonna drag you out there and you will use now because I I did it now so um, where does that go back to when is the first time that somebody blamed someone else for doing the <laughs> garden of Eden <laughs> it was the wife you gave me it was the snake <laughs> you know <laughs> it's always this way people are people but he but when you get to the place where you say it was me it was me I fell I sinned I stumbled I did it I will arise and go to my father and I will say to him father I've sinned against heaven and before you a true confession right and I'm no longer worthy to be called your son and he says make me like one of your hired servants now they had slaves in those days and they had hired servants 
slaves were like part of the family but hired servants could be um, fired in a day's notice so he's not asking even to be a household slave and belonging to the family again he knew because this is a shame culture now we live in a guilt culture right where we are making people feel guilty in order to make them do what we want them to do anybody ever ex either caused it or <laughs> experienced it you can honestly say we're not a shameless shame culture we're more like a shameless culture right i mean have you no shame seriously <laughs> but this was a shame culture the worst that could happen is to be embarrassed and to be shamed and he had shamed his father right so he's asking not even to be considered a family member he's just asking to have food by being hired in another interesting thing is when he's still this rich little spoiled child he says give me my stuff here he's saying make me like one of your servants it's an interesting part of our journey as as people who are looking to god if that's who you are we our, our prayers when we're baby Christians or not yet Christians, what are they usually entail? What are you asking? Give me, 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 right? But when we grow a little bit and we get, become more real with ourselves, we start saying, hopefully, or if you haven't yet, start now, make me, make me the person you created me to be. Make me more like you, Jesus. Make me understand make me this is surrender back to the one in authority over us rather than i am entitled and it's super countercultural for us right you get that because we live in a in a society where everybody thinks they should get everything for nothing have you noticed yep. it's not biblical and it doesn't make sense right Unless there's fountains with monies coming out. It doesn't make sense. So, he didn't just think. He went and he arose and came to his father. But when he was still a great way off. This is one of the most beautiful sentences in this whole story. When he was still a great way off. His father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. What has his father been doing? We don't know how long the boy has been gone. And he's been waiting. He's been waiting. Do you think his heart was broken? He could have made choices, right? Like, I don't ever want to see this kid again. You know? Blank him. You know, he deserves it. I, he's dead to me. I'm dead to him. He's dead to me. I mean, anger can get the best of us. Bitterness can get the best of us, right? Not this dad. He's been waiting for his boy. He's been waiting for his boy. In our community, it's a big deal, right? I mean, I can't get through this usually without getting all choked up, but that's because I have lived this story. I was, we were told when Harrison was on his journey, when he was feeding himself with the pods, um, to be ready, to be, the, be like the father of the prodigal son and be ready when he c returned. Because here's the thing, right? People don't come back to a God that's like this. Just wait till you come home and I will teach you a lesson and will straighten you out. You want to go home? You want to go home now? But we have a God that waits with open arms for you to come back. With staring down the road. God doesn't actually need to do this. He already knows where you are. <laughs> Just like Jonah, right? He knows where you are, even if you're hiding. <laughs> but metaphorically, he is waiting, waiting for you to come home, waiting for you to turn. And what does he do? What does his father do? He runs. You know how crazy this is? They wore a robe. It's like a dress, you know. It's running would be tough. So, I mean, they have to hike up the skirt so he can run. And he's running because the village may be running also to try to teach this boy a lesson because he didn't just shame his father he shamed the entire village and they're going to get he they're going to give him what for because jewish people seem to really be fond of you know a collective stoning a collective shaming you know and so this dad's probably booking it because he's got to get to his boy before the villagers get to his boy he's embarrassing himself Adult men didn't show their legs. They didn't run. It's just not done. Shameful. 
but he didn't care because there was his boy coming back and he was willing to make a fool of himself so that his boy had a way home because he would never come past the villagers he had a way home that's our father this is so amazing and he ran on his ran and fell on his neck and kissed him and then the son said he probably couldn't get a word out before his dad's like hanging on him like whoa you know he probably stunned seeing him run maybe he's wondering if he's gonna get a beating <laughs> you don't know <laughs> <All right. laughs> father I've sinned against heaven and in your sight and I'm no longer worthy to be called your son he gave the confession after his dad already hugged him and kissed him when he was still smelly he probably didn't shower when he was still gross when he was still within a broken relationship but his father wouldn't even hear it but the father said to his servants bring out the best robe that's reserved for children or a special guest and put a ring on his hand that's for a son and sandals on his feet slaves and servants went barefoot he is demonstrating in every action this is my child this is my son And bring the fatted calf, which would be reserved for a special occasion. Occasion. Bring it here and kill it. And let us eat and be merry. Let us eat and have a party. For this son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. He was dead. He didn't know. I mean, this is one of the real realities we face too. That Harrison might die in his addiction right and he might die lost he might die found we didn't know but this son of mine is alive he was dead and is alive again and was lost and is found and they began to party this is good news and you know he's talking about the sinners and the tax collectors and the people far from God and I'm sure they're like leaning in pretty heavily because <gasps> is it true is it possible could we come home yes you can come home right there's a party in heaven for every person who turns to god it's amazing all the angels and there's a lot of them now there's another brother now his older son was in the field question i have is why didn't anybody go get him, right? <laughs> Why didn't they send a servant to go grab the guy? But this is Jesus' story. He can tell it however he wants. And as he came and drew near the house, he heard music and dancing. He's like, what is going on? So he called one of the servants and asked what these things meant. And the servant said to him, your brother has come. And because he, has he the father, has received him safe and sound, your father has killed the fatted calf. But he was angry and would not go in. He was not happy. Therefore his father came out and pleaded with him. He ran to the one son. He k went to the other son. He, he, he sought them both out and pleaded with him. So he answers and said to his father, Lo, these many years I've been serving you, and I never transgressed your commandment at any time, and yet you never gave me a young goat that I make merry with my friends. I was always good. I never disobeyed. I always did what you asked me. Okay. <laughs> um, but you never even gave me a goat. I'm not even asking for the fatted gaff. You gave me not even a goat to make merry with his friend but he's missing the point why was the dad partying the boy was back was he partying bringing his friends over to party with him no he was celebrating that the boy was alive and the and the older brother just wants to hang out with his friends and the goat he's missing the entire point and he goes on but as soon as this son of yours no longer his brother apparently this son of yours came who has devoured your livelihood with harlots you killed the fatted calf for him you know older brothers 
the ones who stayed home and were good and went to church and tithed and, and did it all right, we can be the older brother and feel like, I should deserve greater honor. I should be more special. I should be treated with respect because I never strayed. Right, but I mean, right. I mean, but we, we that's what the Pharisees had done. They were perfect. Yeah. The, and, and, but we can go there, right? You're going you're gonna to find yourself in one or both of these camps or maybe in both of them, right? Or one brother or the other brother or both. And the father said to him, son, but he doesn't use the word for son. He uses the word for child, technon, it's male son. And it's like, my child. He's telling him how much he loves him. My child, you are always with me. Like, I'm happy with you. I love you the same. And all that I have is yours, which is now technically true, right? Because the other brother used the rest of it. It was right that we should make merry, that we had a party and be glad for your brother was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. Don't you get it? Don't you get it, dear son? We've got our boy back. He, do you think the party would be for the rest of this kid who came back's life? Were they going to party every day, every night from here until he died a natural death? No. <laughs> the party is for the return and then real life starts. You got to start working. You got to start participating. He will be doing what the father wants, just like the older brother. But when the person returns, the father gets that and he turned back to the father and this is this is like who were we in the story right when we mess up don't come to church i can't help you we can't help you sorry i mean come to church but don't come to church first right don't go to your christian friends go to your father in heaven ask him for forgiveness and then be sure to live in community so that you don't find yourself off eating pea pods again or care pods and off in a foreign country. But you know who was the real prodigal in the story? The father was the actual prodigal. He was recklessly extravagant with his love. It's what Father God does because uh, too because he also he sent his son. He was willing to lose everything like his dear son, so we could have life eternal. Can you imagine that? So our Father in heaven is extravagant in his love. Does that mean it always feel good? feels good when he loves you? Sometimes he gives you time out. Sometimes he says no. I prayed for more children. God said no. Years later, I thank God for not giving me more children. You know, I mean, sometimes no is the best answer. But in the moment, it doesn't feel that way. So if you are lost and you're wondering, you need to arise and go. Don't just think about it. Don't feel guilty and stay put. Get up. Go to the Father. He's waiting with open arms, right? Jesus is on the cross, proving that. Well, he's no longer on the cross. So the story is an important story for us. And we have to decide who we are. Like, I can look at this group. I can't look at you online. But I can look at this group. And I know we've come home. Good job, family. You've come home. You've come home. But you probably know someone in your friends or family who's still in the pigsty eating eating slop and we might have to be the evidence that my God is real we saying that right if we don't look any different it's one of the big realizations I came to during that really hard journey if my faith doesn't change how I walk through this differently than someone without faith then what does my faith even mean? 
if I can't trust, if I can't hold on in faith, if I can't have joy in the midst of the most horrible circumstances I'd ever faced until that time, then what is my faith? What does it even mean? Is it real? So my life needs to be the evidence so that another person can go, wait, I can come home? I want to come home. I want to go, because it's home, like the home he couldn't wait to get out of had servants and food and a loving father. But isn't that, we convince ourselves that it's no good at home. Anywhere else but home is better. Yeah. And then we're anywhere else and we're like, I wanna go home. And so that's our invitation, right? To, to come on home. And maybe, just maybe, if you find yourself in the, in the, um, in the seat of the Pharisees, that just couldn't stand that these, these filthy tax collectors and sinners who, who they despise and stayed away from, that they, there was a way home for them. We have to examine our hearts. Right? You all know you don't have to clean up to come to church. <laughs> you don't even have to behave in church <laughs> because we are the church. There's no building to go to. But we need to make sure, and some of you have been really hurt by people who acted like that in previous experiences, that somehow you're not good enough until you look like them. But that's death possibly, right? It's a different form of death. And so I want to invite us to, to think that way and to come on home and to live free knowing that w it's all paid for. And so if you are e eating pe uh, pods right now and you're living in a foreign country and you are smelly and you thought the, y the world was serving you but you are carrying the weight of the world instead, come on home. Get up. Confess. Come on home. Because God is waiting for you with open arms. Here's what you do. You say, I'm a sinner. I messed up. Oh boy, I messed up. And I ask for forgiveness. I believe that Jesus paid for every last sin on the cross and inviting Jesus into your life. Let's pray. We'll pray that prayer and then we'll pray all together. Oh, Father God, I am a sinner and I ask you for your forgiveness. I have messed up so bad and, and I'd be t I'm so tempted to believe that you could never forgive me. But I listened to that story and if you could forgive the one who cursed you basically and called you dead, I, you will take me home. So I pray receive me. I pray that you would forgive me for my sins. I believe that Jesus paid for them all and I ask you Jesus to come into my heart and life and to be my Lord and Savior forever. I don't even know what that means but help me to follow you. Connect me with a community that knows you and loves you so I can become more like you. Make me like you Jesus. Lord for all of us make us like you. Instead of you giving us, which you've already done so plentiful, here we are and we say, I am yours. When I've said yes to you, Jesus, I am yours. We are yours. Make us the people that you can use to rescue others, to be a lifeline to others. Only you can save them. But let us be those people where it's safe to come and explore and to come and find the real love of the recklessly loving father that you are in heaven and we pray this in jesus name amen so next steps i would just encourage everyone to to really just do an inventory and ask god what do i need to deal with because you know i found out this morning in a deeper way god convicted me that i am the rich fool I am the unmerciful servant. I am the lost sheep. It, it, it's, I, I don't think of people as those people, but it's easy to feel like you you are okay and it's them, but I wander off all the time. I hold grudges. I ho withhold forgiveness for slights. And I act like this life is my own to live. And that is wrong. So I, I ask for all of us to do that inventory and ask God to show you 
what he wants to fix, what he wants to heal, what he wants to set free, because he's all about that. Because we have a good and holy God that we serve. Don't know what parable next week, but we'll let God tell us that. <laughs> <laughs>